Welcome to the Clash Bash League. I'm William Table and Legs, and our match today is between one of my best friends, no bias, Darth Prentice, and Theo. Theo is running Ira today, which is typically a tempo-based deck as one of his two decks, the deck that's going to be thrown out here. Up against uh, up against Darth Prentice's Blaze. Blaze more of like a combo wizard deck. You think uh, decks kind of like Kano. Um... And it looks like they've already got an aura on the board. It's Blessing of Aether, which is a pretty neat aura um, that will buff your arcane damage on the next turn, which is kind of interesting. It's not often used uh, in Wizard right now, but it can lead to really explosive turns. Um, I think they're just hashing back and forth the turn one plays. Uh... Just trying to see if they can get anything out of each other. Uh, let's let's go over like what we see on the board here, right? So, Darth Prentice already using uh, the Talismanic Lens, which allows him to opt to Blaze's ability, gain counters every time you opt, use those counters to play cards at instant speed like a wizard do. Uh, they're running Seeker's Mitts, which is interesting. I believe Seeker's Mitts lets you opt even more. Uh, yeah. It, it uh, prevents one damage at the cost of one resource at instant speed and ops one, which is kind of neat. Actually, I kind of like that. Uh, Spellfire Cloak gives you an extra resource. Mage Master's Boots uh, lets you play your non-attack actions with go again. Uh, whereas Ira on the other side, AB3. This is not surprising in my opinion um, because she is playing more of like a tempo, or not a tempo, but like a, like a, a value-based... Get the most out of your cards turn over turn, which is interesting because that's a flick flack. Ira with flick flack up against Blaze. I don't think we're going to be seeing any physical damage coming out of Blaze. Uh, so that's kind of interesting. Ira also with Heart and Cross Strap leads to very explosive turns. It's, it's one of the most busted pieces of equipment in the format. And so I I feel like if your hero can run that equipment, then that is a very good reason to play them. Yeah, shuffling back and forth a little bit. Uh, Blaze is taking some damage. Ira took one damage, actually staying pretty healthy. Blaze with two counters on him. That's still from the Telesmatic Lens, I believe. It's going to be um, an interesting back and forth. It might be a bit of a grindier game. And if I had to give it to someone... Um, out the gate, like a deck that's more advantaged in this matchup, I would definitely say Blaze, probably. Uh, if Ira can't present enough turn over turn damage, then Blaze will just pull together an interesting combo. But this Blaze, uh, Darth's Blaze is playing a very interesting build. We've seen several cards that I haven't seen in Blaze before already, like the, uh, like that aura. Let me look that up. Blessing of uh, Aether. At the start of your turn, destroy Blessing. Next card you play gets plus three. Ira with a humble. So a classic Ira strat. Uh, Kadachi with go again. Into an attack uh, that only costs two. And then that only uses exactly a blue to uh, come in for roughly eight damage, right? So one from the Kadachi, one from her hero ability, and six damage from the two card six, two pitch six. Um, but they've had to pitch the Flick Flack. Looks like they used that excess resource to uh, block some AB. It's kind of interesting, right? So you build a deck like Ira, and your expectation is to try to get the most out of your resources, get the most damage per card pitched. Uh, but when you're up against a wizard, sometimes you just got to make awkward pitches, uh, like right there. Ooh, Absorbent Aether, one of my favorite cards in Blaze right now. This just is a defense reaction. That blocks for four. It costs two, though. And uh, what it says is uh, the next card you play this turn with an effect that deals arcane damage instead of deals that much plus two. She is struggling in a lot of formats to pump out the same kind of combo damage numbers that uh, Kano you would typically see. Um, so this is kind of interesting. Yeah, so pitching a blue. Played a zap. 
Oh, absorb an aether only costs one, so that actually combos really well with waning moon, right? So you absorb with an aether, and then you play the zap for five because it was a. I don't know where the fifth damage came from. Uh, it was I thought it was a yellow zap. Um, so for three cards, you are blocking four, and you will deal that five arcane damage from zap plus absorb an aether, and then three more damage from waning moon. So that's 8, 9, 10, 11, 12 off of 3 cards. That's actually really strong. Holy frick. It does make the deck really inconsistent if you're Kano and you're playing off the top of the deck, but she's not playing off the top of the deck. She's playing out of her hand. She's playing turn over turn magic. And actually with the life totals this close, 9 to 8, kind of scary for Ira, right? Because Blaze has ways to go over the top, but she also started at lower health. You got to think about that, right? So Ira has taken over the course of the game two more damage than Blaze has. Granted, she's the one presenting damage right now, and fine damage in that. She's a five-card hand to got a flex clause, but I see an all-red hand in front of me. This is going to be impossible to deal with. I think what you got to do is hope that the Blaze tries to commit something that you can use this Oasis Respite on, but it doesn't look like it. You don't want to use the Razor Reflex, because if you use the Razor Reflex, then you can't pitch for the Oasis Respite. They both cost one. You only got a red. Oh, this is awkward. You just got to hope that the Blaze is nervous about this, and they don't look nervous at all. Stone Cold Killer. They are waiting for something big, and Ira might not have anything big this turn. Oh, frick. That blue aspect of Tiger Mind. Oh, it doesn't get go again because there wasn't a blue card to play in front of it. Oh, this is so awkward. Oh, my gosh. Rune Blade hands and a ninja. Three red cards in it. Oh, you can see Theo is just... Oh, it's so upsetting. Oh, no, it's one with no go. I guess you can raise a reflex, but then you just leave yourself so open right now. It's four damage with go again, but you got one card in hand. The most the opponent can expect is three more damage. They could block that out. Yeah, just pass the turn. They were able to put up some, like... If I was Blaze, I'd be hitting him right now because... His hand is completely empty. It looked really awkward. He gave you the window. He's about to draw back up, and it could be some blues. He did pitch a red leg tap. I would just be nervous. Oh, I would have gone for something right there. Let's see what Blaze says, because I'm pretty sure Blaze could play things at instant speed. I mean, she's a ninja, right? As a ninja. A uh, wizard. Yeah, whenever you output counters on, remove X energy counters... Banish a wizard on attack action from your hand with an effect that deals arcane damage equal to X. And you may play this turn as a bonus. Yeah, yeah you could you could have done that last turn. Now he's got to do it this turn. Play Whisper the Oracle. He's opting for The counters are going to go up to seven, which is a lot. Some, uh, some blazes have definitely started cutting Whispers, I believe, in favor of just more passive opting effects, right? So, like, if the game ends and you haven't used all seven of your uh, your energy counters, then you weren't very efficient with them, right? So, you're going to have to find a way to use all seven. And since it's once per turn, you do something this turn, do something next turn, that's kind of explosive, but they got AB3, so you got to be concerned about that. And their hand looks good, and your health went down to two. Whisper of the Oracle is an entire card just for opting. Yeah, you know what? The more I think about it, I'm cold on Whisper of the Oracle. Not putting in my Blaze deck. Ooh, Aether Flare. That's a good card. And it ops. No, it doesn't. It pumps a card. I'm thinking of the other one, Aether Spindle. Aether Flare, one for four. One for three arcane damage. They just pitched the entire three and passed the turn. I, I really hope this Blaze starts getting out those counters, but also has a way to deal with the fact that this... Ira is about to start pumping out damage, right? So it's one into, I forget the arsenal, but there's a Bittering Thorns, which could be up to like five, plus the Razor Reflex. That would put it at like eight with Go Again. Next attack is plus one. What's in the arsenal? I already forgot. Yeah, the Kadachi is not scary. The next thing is scary. Oh, it's an Oasis. Yes, yeah, so uh, not enough resources to use the entire hand. Razor Reflex right here. That's kind of awkward. Maybe you just do a Kadachi. Save the Bittering Thorns. Oh, this is... This is kind of awkward. But you are 
pushing through damage if they don't have a defense reaction. Yep. Spellfire Cloak, I bet it's the red D react. Or I hope it's the red D react. Oh no, it's Cindering Foresight. Implying that they're going to try and kill him this turn or something. Cindering Foresight is a great card. Pumps and ops and can be played at instant speed. Oh, that card is, that card is good. Snap back. So that's not using our ability. That's just dealing damage. I was only got two resources, but they don't know it yet. Which means if they deal 11 damage, well, not 11 damage. They have to deal more because of Oasis. I already forgot about Oasis. But you got to find a way to keep yourself alive or kill them. I don't think I don't think Blaze is getting out of this. Unless Blaze has a D-React that they're not showing anybody, which I wouldn't be using right now. I would be using that Oasis on Snapback. They're thinking about it. Gesturing. Oh, you hate to see it. Oh, no. Oh, no, they took zero damage. Oh, no, now they activate Blaze. They're going to have to deal 10 damage right now. They don't know it, but they will. That's four off the Emeritus. I think that's four. Plus the Waning Moon. Yeah, you just take this and make him. I think you still got a blue. That's not enough to kill him. It's game over. That razor reflexed Kadachi is going to win the game. Yep, there it goes. Ira wins. You know what is not as fast as instant speed, but just as deadly reaction speed. All those cards in hand couldn't block a single one of them. This is a best of three match between these two players. Make sure you tune into the rest of the best of three right here. I'm William Table and Legs from the Table Pit, and you're watching the Clash Bash. Mm -hmm.